$1,600 for a closet? Are you, are you Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. It's Thomasina. Thank you all for tuning in. If you watched last week's video, you know I talked about why I up and moved to New York from North Carolina and I gave you all a background of how I got here. But now I want to answer a lot of the questions I received about the process of apartment hunting. So let's get started. First things first, you've decided you're going to move to New York. That's a done deal. You've secured the job and you're making the move. My first piece of advice would be to not start actually apartment hunting until maybe like three weeks before you're about to move. The thing about New York is New York is very fast paced and as soon as a place gets on the market it's taken off immediately like someone jumps and gets it so if you start looking a month in advance for apartments chances are by the time you actually get to New York the apartment is going to be gone already. If you are nervous and you want to just start looking um, early just to get an idea of like price ranges, neighborhoods, like what's on the market at that time, by all means, but it's very unlikely that you will snag something a month before you plan to move in. Some people even start looking the week that they plan to move because things just go that fast. You want to do your research on what area you want to live in. So if you say for instance you snagged a job before um, you started apartment hunting, you want to try to find an apartment that gives Gives you the shortest commute to work because um, pub if you're taking public transit it can be crazy during rush hour peak hours like 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. and then like 4 p.m. 5 p.m. so you just want to make sure you have like the smoothest commute to and from work you also want to take into consideration safety of the neighborhood crime rates you want to take into consideration distance from grocery stores from laundromats if you don't have a laundry in your building or in your apartment you want to take into consideration did i say trains already if not you want to take into consideration how close you are to the metro or bus system I didn't have a specific, I knew I was going to live in Brooklyn, but I didn't know what area of Brooklyn. So that made it really difficult for me because I would post a listing like, hey, looking for a roommate, yada, yada, yada. And then people are automatically going to ask you like, okay, what area, what part of Brooklyn? And I'm like, I don't know, <laughs> the safest area, I don't know. So yeah, just make sure you know what area or even areas, just narrow down to like your top three or four areas um, that way it'll just be an easier search you know so you want to determine whether you're looking for a long-term lease a month-to-month -month lease a short-term lease or a sublet situation so when you're looking at these listings you want to make sure that that is very clearly stated in the listing because if you want a short-term lease and you find an apartment that you love but it's 12 months you have to make sure you know that information up front before you get too deep into the process. Long term lease is basically 12 months or more. Short term lease is usually up to six months. Month to month is just as it says, paying month to month so you're not tied down to an apartment. If you want to pay for January and then move out on February, there's not a lease or anything tying you down to that apartment so you're free to do so. And then subletting is when someone has already signed their lease on an apartment and they are moving out and you sign underneath that person whose name is on the lease so you're paying your money um to either that person or the landlord depending on how you work out the situation but basically your name is not on the overall leasing agreement you just created like a side agreement with the tenant who's already sign the long-term lease. There's also a lease takeover. Now in that case, um, if someone who's already signed the long-term lease is moving out and you really like the room and you want to take over the lease, they will just uh, redo the leasing agreement and your name would be then put on the lease, meaning you would be fully responsible for the rent of your room or the apartment. Big question, where do you even find apartments? Like where do you even start? So I just wanted to clarify for the purposes of this video, when I say apartment, I really mean room, but I use the term interchangeably. For the most part, when people say they're looking for an apartment in New York, they really mean they're looking for a room within an apartment. So they're gonna have roommates. 
most of the time an apartment itself like an entire apartment is going to run you like upwards of three grand so for the purposes of this video i'm only speaking of searching for like rooms within apartments but the same um concepts can still be applied to searching for an entire apartment for my process the most helpful tool i used was facebook and i was really surprised by that because i stopped using facebook like a couple of years back but there are a lot of awesome facebook housing groups on facebook there are things like gypsy housing gypsy housing is really big especially for major cities people just post um listings if they're subletting or if they have a room available they post their listings on there if they're looking for roommates they post that on there as well there's another facebook group called ghost light ghost light housing and i'll tag i'll put all of these in the description box below so you can just click the link but there's also ghost light housing which i think is for um mostly for people in the arts so like actors actresses painters dancers things of that nature there's uh nyc roommates there's a um housing or roommates groups specifically for people of color and queer identifying people honestly just type in what you're looking for in the search box search box of facebook and something that you're looking for is going to pop up so facebook is a super super useful tool you can also use craigslist um before i moved to new york a lot of other youtubers and um bloggers were saying that craigslist was helpful as well i personally can't get jiggy with craigslist i just feel like it's very chaotic and not really up to date so to me craigslist is very confusing um and it's harder for me to differentiate legit listings from scams so i just i tried but then i just i couldn't do it so i just stayed clear uh craigslist but you might have better luck than i do so don't count that out there is a website called nooklin there is an app called roomy which roomy was really great you can either people can post listings so if they have an open room in their apartment they can post that or people looking for rooms can also post that they're looking for roommates. Um, so it goes both ways. So you can find roommates on there and then you can find apartments that are already filled and just looking for like one other person or two other people. Of course, apartments.com, you can search the neighborhood, you can put your price range and all the available listings that they have on the site will pop up. A lot of the listings on apartments apartments.com are a little bit more pricier but depending on your price range you may be able to afford it oh yes rent hop rent hop was really really good rent hop and zillow i think they did a good job at putting a variety of listings at a lower price range um so i did find a lot of listings in my price range there with that it was just i guess getting realtors and people who posted the listings to respond to me i think the turnaround time for response for me personally was a little slow but you again you might have better luck than i do those are some of the top places or sites and resources i use to find listings in general so with um facebook and like apartments.com and zillow and rent hop uh, the people that are posting listings can be brokers, they can be realtors, they can be just regular tenants who are just trying to like sublet or rent out their room. So you really have to be cognizant of who you're talking to because say for instance if you are talking to a broker then you're most likely going to have to take pay a broker's fee which we'll get into that later in the video but you just want to make sure um, you know who you're talking to. So jumping right into how to find roommates, it was easier for me to join in on an apartment rather than gathering people and then we all found finding an apartment together. Um, just because you have people who may not be on the same time schedule as you, people may not have their coins together like you do at the time. Um, people may want different amenities. You're basing your decision on too many opinions. So for me, it was easier for me to join a group rather than creating my own group. As far as finding a roommate, again, Facebook is a major, major tool. When people are posting listings, they're also posting that they're looking for roommates. So that's quick and easy way to find roommates right there. Group Me is also a great way um, 
for me personally I had a mutual friend who had already moved to New York before me and so she plugged me in to many group me's where people were posting either rooms or that they were looking for roommates to apartment hunt with so group me is also a great tool like I said roomy app that's specifically made for you to find roommates so that's good as well there are also realtors so, so certain um realty I don't know certain realty groups have realtors that do roommate matching so if you choose to work with a realtor um they'll have you fill out like a kind of like a survey and then they'll match it with all the other applications that they've received and pair you together so if you want to pay for that service that option is also available some realtors even offer that service for free so you just have to do your research um and see like which realtors in the area which ones are reputable and which ones offer the roommate matching service bumble bumble is actually a really good resource so um there's the bumble date there's bumble business and then there's bumble bff so um you can use the bumble bff and then just put in your bio that you just moved to new york or you're looking to move to new york and you're looking for roommates and as you swipe you'll see that there are actually a lot of people on there as well looking for roommates so yeah now let's talk about money because everybody's always asking oh how much did you say to move, move to new york how much money should i have yada 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 and honestly a lot of the YouTube videos I watched prior to moving to New York, when they mentioned how much money they had moving here, I'm like, how? How did you make that happen? They're like, oh, I moved to New York with $800 in my pocket. Oh, I moved to New York with a thousand in my pocket and I'm like no no offense to the people who've done that I'm like kudos to you I wish I could do it but just tell me how because I can tell you guys right now had I had only a thousand dollars saved up I would have been struggling it's just the grace of God I haven't really had to struggle my entire life for, so for me to get out on my own and struggle it just wouldn't have been good for me so I needed to make sure that I had enough saved up to where I could live the way I was used to living and not be like struggling out here by myself but I would say for you all watching this video to safely move to New York without having to struggle at all I would say you should at least have 3500 saved up and I know I'm, I might get a little bit of backlash from this or naysayers or people who disagree with me. But to me personally, I feel like it's a good safety net. The least amount would be 3500 because you got to think about it. This includes the cost of getting here, whether you're driving or flying or taking the bus or taking the train. That's going to cost then getting your stuff here depending on how much stuff you have if you're living here if you're moving here long term you could just be coming with a book bag or you just you could be coming with like five suitcases like i did then when you find an apartment you're gonna pay first month's rent you're gonna pay you're gonna pay a deposit if you had a broker you're gonna pay a broker's fee you're gonna pay the application fees for these apartments then you got to pay to furnish your apartment so you got to buy a bed you got to buy a bed frame you may need a dresser you're gonna need like kitchen appliances you're gonna need groceries for when you first moved in it's all gonna be adding up you need to get a metro card whether you choose to do the monthly metro card or even just going by day it all adds up and depending on when you start working you don't know when your first paycheck is going to come in so again you just want to have a safety net so yeah at least 3500 if you have less than that you can make it work you can make it work it is doable clearly by these other youtubers who have done it with 800 dollars in their pocket but for me personally i just don't like to struggle so i try to set myself up to where I don't have to do that and that's I've always been that way in my life so to each his own but that's just my two cents another fee that you may encounter let's say you're not making 40 times the rent and you need a guarantor if you don't have a your own personal guarantor like a parent or a sibling or something like that and you want to use an agency then you have to pay that fee so yeah there are a whole bunch of fees that are just gonna smack you in the face and before you know it you've spent three grand 
and it hasn't even been a week. Now let's talk documents. Pretty much when applying for an apartment, the basics of what you'll need, you'll need your, you'll need a valid state ID. You will need two to three months of bank statements. You need proof of employment and pay, like how much you're getting paid from that job. If you don't have like statements from that job yet, or like checks from the job, you can um, provide your employee offer letter with stating the amount that um, you're getting paid and you can use that. Most apartments up here, you have to be making 40 times the rent. Um, and if you don't make 40 times the rent, then you have to have a guarantor who is making 80 to 100 times the rent. And basically what a guarantor is, side note, is basically if you can't afford to pay the rent one month, the gar guarantor is signing on saying, I will pay for the rent in the case that this person cannot pay it. So it's like co-signing. When I lived in North Carolina, is that the same thing? I don't know, but when I lived in North Carolina, I never heard the term guarantor. It was always co-signer. So I think they're the same thing. Don't quote me on that. Oh yeah, credit. Ding, 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 ding. Credit is super important. I would say you need to have at least a 640 credit score. You can get by with lower you're probably going to end up paying more though just for um like security reasons um because if your credit score is below that the landlord is going to assume that your spending habits aren't that great and they're not going to be able to trust you to pay the rent on time so they're going to bump up your rate and if you don't have good credit you'll need a guarantor your guarantor also has to have good credit if you're using a guarantor by the all way. right tips on how to avoid scams i think this was probably my most difficult challenge with apartment hunting was trying to differentiate the legitimate listings apartment listings from the scams oh my god this video is 24 minutes Damn! tip number one i would say never pay anything advanced if you haven't physically seen the apartment so i know um, a lot of people may not be able to travel back and forth up here to look at apartments so I would say narrow down like your top five six seven eight apartments and then just designate one weekend to come see all of them because you do not want to pay anything without having seen anything in person because they can tell you oh you have a gym you have laundry and unit you got a um roof access and then you get here the roof is broke down so you can't even access it you get here and there's no laundry in the building you get here and there's rodents everywhere so like if you haven't physically seen it you don't need to be paying any money period so tip number two ask hella questions i feel like i was a little self-conscious because i felt like i was being annoying since this was my first time like finding an apartment i was asking so many questions and some of the questions people probably thought were stupid but don't feel bad ask all the questions that you need to because ultimately this is your money this is your livelihood this is where you're going to be staying so you want to make sure you have all your bases covered and i would also suggest you try to get everything in writing so let's say you've been communicating with a realtor over the phone you know, just ask them, hey, can you shoot me an email with all the information that we discussed just so I can have it for my references? You know, if they don't, they don't, but at least you ask, you know, closed mouths don't get fed. Do your research on New York tenant laws. So for me, the tenant laws changed like right before I moved here. Um, so I had to do a lot of research and I found some good information. Like I found that um, landlords weren't allowed to charge tenants more than $20 for an application fee, which I'm glad I found out because someone had charged me $70, um, but they ended up refunding me the money, which is great. You just have to do your research and know your stuff because they will scam you out here, especially if they can tell you're not from here, um, if they can tell you're young and you've never done this before, they will take advantage of you. So 
your best defense is knowledge. All right, so. guys, that's all I've got for you today. I hope this video was super helpful. I will tell you just straight up, apartment hunting is stressful, but if you just keep your eyes on the prize, be smart and mindful, you will be fine. Be cognizant of what you're spending your money on. Save, 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 save your coins. You don't need to go to the club. You don't need bottle service. You don't need it. If you're trying to move to New York, you need to save your coins because it is really expensive up here. But again, like I said, if you come here with a, a healthy safety net of savings, you will be good. You will be just fine. Yeah, I wish you all the best of luck. If you have any questions that I didn't answer, please comment down below or send me a message on Instagram because I know I did go through this really fast. And even though I talked really fast, it's still like a 20 minute video. So if you have any more questions, please feel free to reach out to me. If you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and click the notification bell. Uploads every Wednesday, I hope maybe if time permits i'm really gonna try but don't quote me on that see you guys next time thanks for watching